So we come to the journal, to the blank page, with what's on my mind, with what's weighing on my heart, and what's living in my body, that which needs expressing, that which needs a container to hold it, to spill it out onto. And what's on my mind now, this time, this moment, is stealth denial. The journal, the art journal, the blank page, or the not so blank page. This is where I come to lay down and explore and express what is weighing on my mind, what is sitting in my heart, and what is churning in my guts. So I show up here to the blank page to express this. And what I'm sitting with at the moment, what I can't reconcile at the moment is this idea of stealth denial. So I show up, I sit down, I prepare myself to empty out and I make marks. I have no idea what I'm going to create. I have no idea how this page will unfold, but I'm present, I'm present to myself. I'm present to what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, and what I'm seeing. I listen, I make marks, and I respond. And a quiet dialogue unfolds. And the journal page, it takes it all, it holds it all. Stealth denial. I first heard this term expressed by Jonathan Rosen, who is an applied philosopher and climate advocate. Stealth denial is a term that refers to the way we are able to know about climate collapse and yet continue on with our lives as if nothing's happening, as if there's nothing we can do. It doesn't refer to those who um, just deny it because they don't believe it or they deny it because of political and economic agendas. It applies to those of us who believe the science and the research and um, can see the effects that are already unfolding in the world as a result of climate collapse. And yet, with all the data and all the things we know and all the things that we're being told about when and what and how and tipping points and all the things, and then Mother Nature um, stretching out her rage over it with, you know, rising temperatures, rising sea levels, melting ice caps, um, unprecedented tides and tsunamis and cyclones and bushfires and floodings and all the things, you know, that are happening and still it's business as usual. So those of us in stealth denial, we have to keep going with our lives. We're terrified. We suppress it and we move on. We tell ourselves that uh, what difference can one person make when all the one people add up to billions, right? We tell ourselves it's the politicians, you know? We tell ourselves it's big business and yes, it is. And what can we do about that? We don't know. What can we do about that? We just don't know. So we keep getting up, turning on the lights, turning on the taps, buying the things, consuming, living, treading, and we suppress this terrifying dystopia on the horizon because what do we do with it, right? What do we do with that? What do we do with that knowledge? And so 
I come to the journals page, show up, no idea what I'm going to do, just knowing that this is weighing heavily on my heart and running through my mind and messing with my sleep. At the moment where I live, we have fires burning to the left and to the right, north and south. Fires that they are dubbing mega fires, fires which are 300 hectares no, <laughs> 300,000 hectares and growing, 60 kilometers long and growing. And they're marching across the bushlands towards our communities, devastating communities as they go, and devastating wildlife as they go. And so to the north and to the south fires, and we keep going with life. We put up the Christmas tree and we make coffee and we try to get on with our day as best we can. Recently, I was in New Orleans and we had this beautiful conversation with this woman who lived there through Katrina and she shared with us the experience which still sit heavily in her body of the trauma of Katrina and what she said to us was that um, she really felt that what they experienced was just the beginning just the beginning of what's coming for all of us eventually at some point in some way and how it feels sitting here with stealth denial and fires burning around. Meanwhile, there's flooding in Venice and earthquakes and volcanoes erupting in New Zealand and all the things. What it feels like is pre-trauma stress disorder. And that's how it feels. It's living in my body, this pre-trauma stress disorder, this anxiety over the future, this anxiety over what's coming that we're not responding fast enough to, that <laughs> our politicians claim doesn't exist, right? So business as usual. So I bring that to the page to unfold, to lay it down, to explore and express and to give myself an outlet and then the journal page will take it the journal page takes it and I have no intention to create such a literal expression but as these things go you randomly rifle through collage pieces and grab a bit of paper and it says home and home is on my mind home is weighing heavily in my heart this delicate, precious home, our bodies, our houses, the land we live on, beautiful Pachamama, all of it, fragile, precious, delicate, and ever so intricately interconnected, all of it, all of us interconnected, interdependent, one, life and that's what my hands explore that's what my hands express and that's what the journal page offers for me this expression of the interconnected delicacy and preciousness of life all of life So dear creative souls, what will you bring to your art journal? What will you lay out bare on the page for yourself to see and feel? What is weighing on your heart? What is 
running through your mind, what is hiding in the recesses of your body that you don't quite want to bring forward and lay down. Allow the journal page to take it, to express it, all the contradictions, all the beauty, all the fears, all the interconnectedness of life, this beautiful, beautiful life. 